There are a lot of features we take for granted in games, like autosaves and checkpoints. Suffered a terrible death? Chances are you would respawn not too far away and continue onwards. Some games rely on save point placement for their difficulty, like in the Soul series, but some games have terrible save and checkpoint systems that test your patience. Let's take a look at some of them here. Ori and the Blind Forest Moon Studios' acclaimed title had its share of aggravating platforming accentuated by its checkpoint system. While you had normal save spots, energy could be spent on creating checkpoints anywhere. During difficult sections, you may forget to make a checkpoint or not have enough energy to create one. Thankfully, the sequel foregoes this for a more traditional autosave and checkpoint system. Bomberman Act Zero Bomberman Act Zero is an abomination. It attempted to give the classic, cuddly Bomberman the gritty reboot treatment, complete with a dystopian future and first-person battle mode. Ick. But the worst part is that the campaign consisted of 99 floors to blast through, die, and you have to start from the very beginning. Just plain painful. Resistance, Fall of Man. Seeing anything from Insomniac Games on this list is weird, but Resistance Fall of Man, for all its good points, has issues. This included having only one or two checkpoints on each level. So if you happen to die, or slowly get whittled down from all the gunfights and make a mistake, then you're set back by a lot. Superman 64 It's one thing to have a good game with terrible checkpoints, but a bad game, that too, the worst sections and one of the worst games of all time. For as terrible as Superman 64 is, its maze levels were some of the most wretched things ever created. And it's not even like you get terrible checkpoints, there are no checkpoints at all. Die once, and the torture begins anew. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 It's bad enough that Sonic 06 has a terrible story, questionable mechanics, awful controls, poor level design, annoying exploration, and so on. On top of all that are the annoying checkpoint placements in some stages. They crop up minutes into the stage. Sometimes, there wouldn't even be a second checkpoint. Die, and you will die, given the controls in some sequences, and you'll have to redo a lot. But perhaps the worst example is End of the World, the final stage which sees Sonic's friends working together to gather the Chaos Emeralds. Seven stages must be consecutively completed with no checkpoints at all, and some of the more annoying insta-death mechanics in the game are present. Dead Rising 2 Much like Dead Rising 1, the sequel saw Chuck Green having 72 hours of in-game time, which translated to about 6 hours of real-world time, to unravel the mystery behind all the zombies. There are no checkpoints. You must decide when to save, which could be a hindrance, since those precious minutes could lead to failing a case mission. On top of making dying all that harsher, not fulfilling all the requirements means you're locked out of the best ending. It does offer three save slots compared to the original, but it could still be quite harsh, especially on the first playthrough. Diablo 2 Diablo 2 isn't exactly the most friendly game when it comes to certain features, despite its acclaim. You can't just save anywhere. Quitting the game retains your character and campaign progress, but teleports you to the current act's main town. All enemies also respawn. Quit while deep in a dungeon, and it's a long journey back, complete with opposition. Gears of War. Get ready. Here they come. The save systems and checkpoints in some games can often make them feel harder than they should be. Some checkpoints in Gears of War, however, can be downright annoying. Sometimes you'll have to listen to some dialogue and then commence that part of the mission. This makes sense given the narrative. However, upon dying and respawning, you get to hear all of that dialogue again. Every time. Not every sequence in the game is like this, with the pumping station being the worst example, but it can be annoying. Ninja Gaiden Thought the 3D Ninja Gaiden titles were tough? The old school titles were truly unforgiving. Ninja Gaiden 1 offered unlimited continues, but you would go back to the very start of the level you died in. However, this didn't apply to the final act. Consisting of five stages, dying to any of the bosses in the fourth or fifth stage sends you back to the first. Considering these are the toughest stages in the game, any mistake in the home stretch could be costly. Maximo, Ghost to Glory. To save in the old school hack and slash romp, Maximo, Ghost to Glory on PS2, you had to pay the toll. 
Specifically, you had to pay 100 coins to use a save point. While this doesn't seem too bad, it can become a chore as the game wears on and necessitates revisiting easier areas, all for grinding coins. Crash Bandicoot 1 The first Crash Bandicoot could be difficult. Levels like Stormy Ascent and The High Road are good examples. However, the original 1996 PS1 release also had an uh, interesting save system. You either had to collect three character tokens and complete a bonus level or break all crates and then collect the gem at the end, without dying of course. This saved the game and also provided a password. Failing to do either and quitting or losing all lives ensured that progress was lost. The sequels thankfully abandoned this, while Insane Trilogy, the remix, lets you save anywhere on the world map. Resident Evil The contemporary Resident Evil titles are pretty forgiving with saves, thanks to auto-saving and the ability to save an unlimited number of times with a cassette recorder and Biohazard. However, the older titles weren't. In Resident Evil 1, 2, Code Veronica, and so on till Outbreak, you had to use ink ribbons to save. These were limited in number, so knowing the right time to save was key to survival, lest you would lose tons of progress on dying. The system is also in Resident Evil 2 Remake's Hardcore difficulty or Resident Evil 7 on Madhouse difficulty, increasing their challenge. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.